Hello guys and welcome to a new bespoke synth tutorial. Today I want to show you two modules. They are Note Canvas, which is essentially a piano roll, like this. And if you already produce your own music with standard DOS, you already know what we are talking about. And on the other hand, we have Note Sequencer, which is a simple step sequencer that outputs nodes instead of triggers or gates. So I'm going to start using the node sequencer because it's the easier one to use. You simply need to click on each step to create nodes. And you can select the entire node if you move your cursor on the right side of the step, or you can move the cursor on the left side to create half node. If you want to create a node that has a different duration, you simply need to press shift and now you can select all length in between. As I said before, Note Sequencer is monophonic, so you can create well, you can play one note at the time. You can change the velocity of each step by selecting this button uh, rectangle here. You click on it and you move it down, up and down, so it will change the correspective note velocity. On top here we can select the oops, note interval, so the interval, the time interval between each step as we move to the bottom, the speed, the pace at which note sequencer will read, the sequence will be much higher and vice versa. You can define different sequence length and in this example we are set to 8 bars and if we increase this number we can see that the sequencer is copying and pasting each note. So uh, the extra steps we are adding are not blank, they are filled with the previous notes and this is really cool, you don't have to rewrite previous sequence manually. Then we can shift our sequence back and forth using these two arrows. And this is like a carousel. If you want to delete all your sequence, you simply need to press clear. And we can now start talking about the randomization, which is the best feature of Node Sequencer. So here I write a very simple sequence like this one, six nodes. And I want to randomize um, this sequence. So here we have random pitch, chance, the random length and random uh, velocity with random pitch uh, variety, range and density. So if we set the pitch only so we can bring the other two sliders, the other two sections to zero and we press random we are going to affect the pitch only. And as you can see, the nodes are moving on the Y axis. If I change the slider position, like random pitch chance to 0 0.2 or even lower, I'm going to produce very small pitch variation. On the other hand, if I increase this value as well for pitch variety, I'm going to produce very consistent uh, variations. Same process for the random length. So if random length is set to zero and I press random, no modification, no change will be applied. I increase these two sliders and I press random. Here we can see the node length changing. And finally, we have random velocity. You can see the bottom line, the bottom step that is changing uh, its size, so its velocity. Let's say that you found your combination of random uh, chance and range, chance and variety and density as well. And if you want and you want to apply just a randomization to the pitch. You simply need to select pitch and it will affect pitch only. Same for velocity and length. 
Then you have octave. You can change the main octave. So here you can visualize we have note C2 as the highest, then C3, C4, and so on. The last drop down menu is the note mode. And here you can select to tune your note sequencer with the uh, key you're using. My example, I'm using a scale of C Yulian. So here I have all notes from that scale, or I can set my sequencer to chromatic. So from C to C with all semitones in between. Then we have pentatonic and fifths. So I have only G, C, G, C, G, C, and so on. This is the studio version of uh, Node Sequencer because we can control uh, polyphony. We can actually write very, very long melodies and music. So you can press play. Of course, you need to turn on the audio system. You can press play and it will read the melody. So now we have no melody written, so I can press shift. So a plus icon, a green plus icon will appear. I can now click on top of each uh, note. I can take the output here, send it to my car plus strong. You can change the measure length. So here we have two, four, and we can increase this value up to 16, which is an incredibly long melody. So this is really cool. You can create very interesting and complex melodies and music. You can change the quantization interval. By now it's set to eight note. You can increase this value. You can decrease this value, of course. This time we want to write notes in a different way by using a keyboard display and using the record feature. So when you press record, you can send notes to Note Canvas and these will be uh, displayed in here. Now let me increase the view size. I press, I increase the measure length to two. Turn on the audio system, of course, press rec. And stop it and it will continue looping looping again and again if you record your music using rec it will loop every time it reaches the end of the sequence if you want to loop indefinitely you can use free record and it will record and add measures as you play You can write chords because it's once again note canvas it's polyphonic so here I can write such a chord so and I can change the note duration by clicking on its rightmost edge or by selecting it and changing the length lighter here So let's increase the note length for these two as well. And now we can have a listen to the chord. If you want to change a note position, you select it and you simply move it up and down, back and forth. If you want to move a note with no quantization, you simply need to press Alt or Option and you can move it in between each quantization lines. If you want to requantize that note, you simply need to select it and press the quantize button. It will snap that note to the closest quantization line. Instead of changing the note position with your mouse, you can do so in a different way. So you select your note and you have row here and steps. Using row, you can select the row number 
at which you want to place your note and step will move your note one step back and forth once your note is selected you'll always visualize this gray window in the bottom section of note canvas as i've shown you before you have many different parameters the last one is velocity and as i move this slider the note fill will change from fully white to a very tiny and thin line using view rows by now it's set to 16 you can increase this value to whatever 32 and here you can increase the octave range let's set to 64 and here you have one two three four five octaves range now let's say that you wrote your perfect piece and you want to save it you can easily do so by using this save midi and it will export this canvas as a midi file you can recall it whenever you want by pressing load midi you select the folder where you save it and you can open it so it's a very powerful tool note canvas it's very complex allows for complexity but can give you um, a lot of features with this view row number set to 64 the canvas is pretty big and we cannot see each note anymore of course we can visualize the color for the tonic in this example we are set to c eolian so each c is set to green and the fifth above so g it's set to this light orange but besides that we don't have an instant perception of what each interval is so we need to turn on show chord interval and as you can see a colored line will connect vertical nodes and each color defines a specific interval so for instance red it's used to show minor thirds now we can decrease the view row numbers and we can verify it so this note it's a g sharp and this one it's a b and it's true g sharp and b are a minor third if we increase this value so from g sharp or a flat to c we have a major third and here we can see that all major thirds are colored in green. The last feature I want to show you is the loop in and out. If you move the cursor on this gray bar on top of Node Canvas, it will highlight in yellow. And if you have more than one measure, so we need to set it to two, we can loop between measures. And that's it. So hopefully guys this video was useful for you. If so, I invite you to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to support my channel. If you want to suggest the topic for a new video, please let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.